you to the May 4th, 2021 meeting of the Village of Rhinebeck Planning Board. The first item on the agenda is a public hear hearing for Lydia and Michael Slaby, 25 Mulberry Street, for a demolition, a partial demolition, resisting structure in the historic overlay district. Do I have a motion, do I have a motion to open the public hearing? Motion. I'll second that. Right. Jeff says motion and Michael seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Do we have public? There's some public watching. Um, uh, I guess Lydia should make an introduction. We were just the applicant to introduce what, what and why they're, they're demolishing the uh, part of the historic structure for the public that's listening. Um, hi. Thank you so much. It's nice to see all of you. Um, I am, Michael and I have submitted this application um, and I should have pulled it up on my screen before I did all of this. Um, we are submitting the application in order to demolish the back half of our home at 25 Mulberry Street. Um, our, uh, the home is in circa 1880, 1890. Um, historic it is in the historic district we have no um we, we we fully agree with all of that it is a contributing building um the back half of the home was designed for something Sunrise. for it, we believe it was designed for service um it has shorter ceilings in the front half of the house um which uh eight foot ceilings on the first floor and seven foot ceilings on the second floor um and the front half of the house has 10 foot ceilings on the first floor and nine foot ceilings on the second floor. Um, going from the front half of the house to the back half of the house, uh, the ceiling height goes down obviously on the first floor, but on the second floor, it not only goes, it goes down about four feet and then you actually have to go down two feet in the process. And in order to get from one to the end, to the other, you, you end up going through a doorway that is approximately five foot, six inches tall. Um, which causes problems for people who are over five foot, six inches tall. Um, we have contemplated with the help of an engineer and a builder and an architect, the idea of retaining the back half of the house and just retaining the walls and then moving the floors and moving the roof. And that would be demonstrably more expensive um, and it is unclear whether it would even work. Um, further, it is the only historic pictures that we have of the home are from the 1890 um, map that the, I forget the name of it. David, do you remember the name of that map? Um, the, it's the, the Bur Burley map. It's yeah, called. the Burley map that shows the um, the structure is sort of in 3D. It's a really beautiful map. But it shows that the back half of our house actually at one point had a peaked roof. It no longer has a peaked roof. And so at some point in our home's history, uh, there must have been a fire or something that caused that roof line to change. And so in some respects, the back half of the house is no longer the original historic version that it was originally built as. Um, our intention is to preserve. So our intention is to preserve all historic aspects of the home, um, of the of the demolished part, um, the detailing, the the columns, the all of the doodads, um, and make sure that we reuse them as part of the um, as part of the replacement addition. We will leave the entire front of the house. Oh yeah, we're going to leave the entire front of the house and exactly as it is, um, and then have the back half of the the new back half of the port of the house be architecturally consistent, yet simpler um, than the front half of the house in order to show um, that we are not trying to duplicate, just complement the historic nature of the original home. All right. Are there any members of the public here that would like to comment on the application for a historic demo, partial demolition permit of 25 Mulberry Street? You can raise your hand and uh, Brian will turn on your microphone. Here we have a okay, hand raised. So Peter, Peter and Jerry, I saw them raise their hand. Yep. 
first. If others would <clears throat> like to speak, just send me a chat message or um, I guess that's that's the only other option. <laughs> um, so uh, Peter and Jerry, just please state your name or both of your names and the address uh, in, in the village. Thank you. Uh, Peter Amendola, 27 Mulberry. Jerry Pagliari, same address. Uh, we are the most immediate neighbors and the ones who would, uh, this um, demolition and change would have a real impact on in the neighborhood. And we're fully supportive. We have sent such an email uh, to the village offices. Uh, we have seen the plans. We think they're excellent. I think it will add value to the neighborhood. Um, I, not much more to say. Okay. Anyone else like to uh, raise your hand, send Ryan a chat message? Um, I'm not seeing any more. Um, the planning board has received various letters. Um, so they are part of the record. Um, no one else seems to be wanting to chime in chair so right, so why don't we uh, get some comments some of these letters are referring to the garage and variances and stuff not specifically for the uh, demolition permit um, why don't we uh, have comments from the board and go around the uh, around the room whoever wants to speak first uh, John Clark you have comments um, it should probably be noted for the public that we, as a planning board, did a site visit and really walked through and around this property to get a good sense of, of what's being proposed. And um, I would like to see if there's um, some graphics that can be shown um, of, so that the public would be able to see particularly I'm not sure anybody out there is really interested. I haven't seen any other hands up, but um, from what I got out of the field trip, um, I thought that what they're doing is largely invisible from the street. And um, my sense of what the historic district is supposed to do is preserve the buildings as much as possible, but particularly the exterior of the building and particularly the exterior of the building that could be seen from the street. And so uh, in terms of demolishing this rear addition, the main part of the house stays intact. Uh, that's the part that's visible from the street. Um, what they're doing, the plans that I saw, um, show that they're being very sensitive about putting the addition back to, to capture the historic quality of uh, the original building. And um, I'm inclined to say that I would support the demolition uh, as proposed because I think the end result would be um, no changes to the streetscape and um, um, a compatible building to the rear. Okay, uh, James? Sure. Uh, oh, there. Uh, I, 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 you know, I would just say that uh, we've been dealing now for the last month or so <clears throat> with this project before the public hearing and, and uh, as John said, had a had a had a visit site visit, um, but I I'd say that uh, the the level of cooperation has been uh, terrific all the way along. Not only with uh, us in terms of getting information we needed, but uh, working with the neighbors. Uh, the letters that have come in, from neighbors on various sides have been all strongly uh, supportive and and have commented on how. Uh, the Slabies have worked with uh, with them to keep them on board in terms of what's happening and, and their sensitivity to the uh, need for historic preservation. And uh, so 
I, I'm impressed with uh, the what we've seen so far. Michael? Um, normally, I'm inclined to not go with the demolition of something that age, but after visiting and seeing the difference between the back half and the, um, the, the, the front half um, and the, the really excellent plan, <laughs> just more um, in symmetry to, to the house. Uh, 40 years ago, I lived in a house in Wappinger in the servants' quarters. So I, 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 can, I could see in that house, you know, what the slabies are saying and, and you know, um, I, I'm totally for this at this point. Uh, I would just say that I would like, you know, a really detailed listing of all the architectural elements um, coming off, not just say, you know, we're going to reuse them, but really list them and give the dimensions and take photographs and have, you know, a really um, a, a good use that they're reused or replicated in kind so that, you know, when it is done, it's not, oh, well, we couldn't find anybody to, to construct this. So we went to Home Depot and, you know, bought a smaller, skinnier, cheaper looking, you know, it's got to tie in. And I, I think they'll do that. So um, I'm inclined to, uh, to be in favor of the demolition. All right, Jeff? I would be thrilled if all of the applicants were as good with their detail as Michael and Lydia have been, um, kind of echo what James said. They've been very, very cooperative, but the level of detail and the plans and the uh, elevations and the architectural drawings was outstanding. Um, we did, as others have mentioned, go on a site visit. And if you had been on the site visit, uh, you would have gotten a real good idea what Lydia mentioned that the back portion of the house uh, pretty much operates at a lower elevation from the front portion of the house. And if you were on the top floor and you wanted to go to the back, um, even I would have to duck my head to get through the door. And I'm not tall. Um, so I think this is really good. And another thing I would mention is that when you look at the existing house, there were actually two additions. The most recent addition, which was not that long ago, is really not in, in scale or uh, complementary whatsoever of the house. And Frank, it sticks out like a sore thumb if you saw it from the back. And if you walk down the street and you look down the driveway, you'll see two portions of the house jutting out. One is uh, a portion of the older piece that's at a different elevation that, that's going to be removed. And the other is the newer piece. So from that single point of view, the plan that they have would be an improvement. I mean, you have to really kind of bend down and stare, but... Um, it would be a real improvement, I think, to the house. It's a, it's a sensitive, uh, well thought plan. Um, I don't think it compromises. I think it actually complements the house. So I am fully in support of the uh, demolition permit. Okay, so does uh, the board see any reason why we should continue the public hearing? Or would uh, we be in favor of closing the public hearing now? Hold on, David. Uh, Lydia would like to share some some pictures, so okay. just I'm going to stop. Go ahead. Okay. I, it was just a you know just in case. Hold on to me. So to show just what Jeff was mentioning. Sorry about the truck, but um, this here is the old short part of the house and this here is the new and then it's all hidden behind this really attractive gate um behind the gate this is the new part of the part of the house that we're trying to talk about this is what it looks like from the north uh east northwest northeast um this is the old part of the house the rail part and this you can see this is the old 
short part with the now flat roof and then the new part that sort of attached on like a single wide was just slapped on the side of the house. Um, and then obviously everything, this peaked roof um, shows the part of the house that obviously we would keep. Um, so that's that. All right. Um, if everybody could stop sharing so we could see each other again. Okay, so um, if no one has any objections, then uh, could I have a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion to close the public hearing. Do we have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. So, um, I guess the next motion would be to uh, grant the partial demolition permit. Can someone make a motion to do that? I'll make the motion to grant the partial demolition. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Okay. We need a roll call vote. Jeff Christensen. Aye. Michael Gee. Aye. James Davidson? Aye. John Clark? Aye. David Miller? Aye. All right, the demolition permit is granted. Partial demolition. Partial demolition permit's granted. <laughs> we don't want any mistakes about that. Yeah, we don't want to make mistakes. We don't want to knock down the whole house. Um, okay, so the next item is, is these guys again for two variances. Well, this is going to be, David, before you go into it, this is going to be very short because uh, between our engineer and the Department of Health and all the rest of it, we don't have a site plan for you. So I, we're going to have to push off on this particular question until okay. I have a site plan for you. Did, did we get, I think, um, we got a ruling from some CEO, we seem to have a different one <laughs> every week right now, um, that said the five foot but the pushier has to be, because um, it's got a cover, that would require a variance. Yeah. What you didn't know was what's happening in the back yet. Right, with the septic, the septic system, distance from the pool, what has to happen back there before you can make a determination about. I think John Clock had asked last time, can the variance be less for the pushier? Do you need it to be that wide? Yep. So we will you can um, look at that. Yeah, we, we, we were waiting to look at that until we'd at least gotten, you know, the information about the septic system. So I have that on my list for the site plan um, when we have the septic system kind of organized. Because as John Clark always, you know, points out that we always say, you know, every foot that less of a variance is easier for the, for the ZBA to, uh, to grant it. So if it can be four feet or three feet, you know, rather than the five feet, that, that helps. Everything you do helps. All right, so we'll, we'll try again. Uh, we need a motion to table this, David, until the uh, May 18th meeting. Okay. Do I have a motion to uh, table the uh, variance proposal until two weeks from now? I'll make the motion to table it. Do we second. have a second? Or John Clark seconds it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The other uh, point of procedure that we have not done yet is declared lead agency. Okay. Someone make a motion. Someone make a motion to declare a lead agency. Um, wouldn't the ZBA be lead agent for this item? Well, um, this is more or less over the whole project, oh. the whole project itself, John. All right, then, then I'll make a motion. I'll I'll second. Second. Jeff seconds, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So I guess that's it for Lydia and Michael today. All righty. All right, new business. Uh, 41 East Market Street, Suite 3, a smoothie bar. 
Is the uh, applicant here, Ryan? Yes, I believe uh, yes. applicants are here. Yes. The applicants are here. Okay. Am I on? I don't know. Do you you're hear you're on, Megan. Okay, yes. cool. <laughs> you're on. So this is a special use permit for restaurant, retail, and sign application. So it's going from a, uh, uh, what was it? A retail, it was right? retail. It's going to a restaurant, which is takeout only, but nonetheless restaurant. So uh, <laughs> it requires a special permit, even though there'll be technically no seating in it. Yeah. So a special permit requires a public hearing, correct? Correct. So um, why don't you go over your project? Me, my turn? Yeah. Yes, Megan. Oh, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, yeah, so I wanna open like a little smoothie bar with acai bowls and juices and like salads to go with like a big um, to-go fridge where you guys can come in, grab, go, yeah. <laughs> Something healthy for the town. Really good. We have a difficult design with a post-it in the middle of it. <laughs> well, that was because, so we were trying to figure out, it's a small space, only like 650 square feet. So right. I was trying to figure out if I could get seating in there, but it's kind of, it's too tight. So I can't. Um, so really it's going to be um, when you walk in, so to the right, so there's going to be like a, um, nice uh wood like my dad's making it out of like a tree it's like a little bar thing that you can with two stools underneath it kind of so you can look outside that's about like the only little area that you know you could sit if you sat but really it's well, just if, for if, looks <laughs> if you figured out what you're doing especially in two weeks for the public hearing it'd yeah. be good if you if you had bought a ruler oh um, a ruler. Actually... Uh, i actually know so the one side is 81.5 uh square feet or yeah square feet inches sorry on one side and the other side is uh 62 inches yep on the by the window the window sills and then when you walk in it's just gonna have like a little counter uh the counter is actually eight and a half feet and then my to-go case is actually 81 inches by 81 inches high by 72 inches wide so that's on the right hand side with like a little garbage um, and then the bathroom is like when you walk straight, if you need to use the bathroom and then like the back cart, we'll put like all the little like smoothie mixers and like, um, on the left, I'm going to have like an area where it's like granola and like stuff to like dry stuff that doesn't have to be cold to grab and go. And yeah, I'm going to make it really pretty. Yep. Oh, yeah. And there's a the kitchen. Yep. And then sink. Yep my workstation and more and oh yeah so we're gonna have like um avocado toast bruschetta toast nutella toast um a little waffle maker with like fresh fruit um what else is on the menu juices smoothies acai bowls um that's really it but it's really it's really good stuff but they have to take it home with them yeah yep you can take you it find home. a place to sit somewhere um, no, I was thinking, am I allowed to have seats? Well, I don't want anywhere from the sit because it really, it's too small. Um, but uh, am I allowed to have like, you know, in front of the windows or am I allowed to have like a, a what's it called? Like a, a table and chairs outside. There's probably room for two, one in front of each window outside. I know back when they had it as a gelato place, they had that, but I don't know. But well, we'd have to put that on the plan and right how, how, how many there are two spots this is a fixed parking lot in the uh, bank parking lot with allocated spaces to everyone how many are allocated for this store as far as we know there are two spaces okay and if there's tables and chairs inside or out that could change yes so so yeah. megan how parking is assigned to um, locations, especially businesses in the village center district is based on tables and, and chairs, really chairs. So it's four seats to a table, or I think it's eight seats on the outside. So 
Um, you, if, if you want outside seating, you would probably have to pay a parking in lieu of fee. And that's a thousand dollars a spot. It, uh, oh. Can you guys can you guys hear me? I'm sorry. I yeah. I, I had to go offline for a second. It, it, it's it's Joe. It, State it, your full name, Joe. Uh, Joe Curtis. <laughs> okay. Can you actually see me? Uh, we can, can, Joe. Okay, good. Ball ball uh, cap and all. Okay, thank <laughs> you. So, uh, the the agreement when we made the right away in that parking lot that we shared with the bank. Uh, I remember Karen had, was doing the minutes at that time. I'm not sure if they are still available, but we were guaranteed to put any retail store in there uh, by us complying and working with the village planning board and also working with the bank. Okay, Joe, that's, that's okay and good. However, what Megan is proposing is a restaurant on, under the village code. It's not considered retail. So well, is it, isn't it, it's a to go thing. So it doesn't it matter. Be, you're, okay. you're providing Does something food? to eat. Okay. You're providing food to eat. Yeah, that's a restaurant. And so, it's considered well, a restaurant underneath. Not a second. The on, gelato, under the village code. The gelato place was there. Mm -hmm. So that was considered retail as well, uh, retail or whatever, however you want to call it, retail or restaurant. So yeah, they had the same things as we used to have. The exact, they actually had a lady that did juices and, and all exact, that stuff too. The exact same thing. It is not a restaurant. Mm -hmm. it's, it's considered a, a, a like to-go. So, so can, can John Clark jump in here? Because I know possibly the – Code has changed, Joe, since the gelato place was was present um, in front of this board. Okay. Uh, Guys, I don't I don't need to have the seating outside. I'll just put plants out there to make it look pretty. It's not important to me. I mean, there is time to decide. I mean, you do have to have a public hearing um, next time um, uh, before final approval can 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 happen. This year, the village has waived all laws. So you can put a table and chair out there for this summer. That okay. won't be permanent, you know, as part of the site plan. But like I said, we're going to have the public hearing. Mr. 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 Chair, there, there, there is a permit process to that, yes. just, to remind, just to remind you. So it's not a free-for-all. All, all uh, businesses need to apply for a permit um, to have door. outdoor seating. Right. You have to go to the village clerk and she'll give you a form. But for, for two weeks from now, can you, you know, take, take a ruler, draw a rectangle yep. or whatever, and, yep. you know, write that so the public, if members of the public come, which may or may not happen, at least for our records, yeah. we will have a drawing. We don't ask anybody to hire an architect. <laughs> But, yeah, it kind of looks like chicken scratch. Sorry, guys. Yes, and there's a post in the middle. I don't know what the post is. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, it has, so it has Megan, to be accurately scaled and measured. I personally <laughs> liked it, this idea, and I think it's good. But this drawing needs a lot because this is an official document. It goes on the okay. record. Okay, <laughs> I can do that. All, all, all she needs is just the uh, dimensions. Okay. Right, the, the, the dimensions of the suite and the, and the space in there, yes. Okay, okay. Those circles yeah. I, I or know something, it, or so. bar stools or something, you've got to make it clear. There's like six circles along the bottom there. Are those bar stools that sit in the uh, There's the yeah, other two on each side, two bar stools on each side. All right, that's seating. So you've got to make it clear what that is too. So an accurate drawing would really help because it's okay. going to be an official drawing of your site plan. You can use a so, ruler and a pencil. You don't have to hire an architect, but it should be clearer than this. Okay. So you understand what you're looking for. My other graph paper. I do have one question. Graph paper would be good. Yes, Joe. Um, so Perfect. someone told, so I don't know. So if for every parking spot, is it four, I'm allowed four chairs? Is that how it works? If, that's what I was told. Well, in, in the gelato place, they had, uh, two tables in there and 
like I said, when we signed the agreement with the village of Rhinebeck, we were guaranteed the exact same signage size. <clears throat> that's all rubber stamp. And we were guaranteed no in lieu of fee of parking for the spaces that are there. And they're the same size spaces. So it looks like just a more detailed graph paper layout of your floor plan would be sufficient. Yeah, and we'll, we'll have to, we'll research that over the next two weeks and check. We don't, I'll have to refer it to whoever's the zoning enforcement officer for this week who can clarify, you know, what, what's happening uh, with that space. And um, that's Mr. McLaughlin. Is he the zoning enforcer now? He's part of the department. Um, yeah. He's more yeah. the administrator. There's someone oh. else who's been temporarily That would hired. be Justin. That would be Justin. Okay. Okay. The officer. At the All right. Fantastic. Just and, and to be clear, the um, it is quite, it is as defined by the the uh, zoning code a restaurant. If you look up the definition of a restaurant in the code, it fits. <clears throat> and in I don't know what year it was. Um, certainly, long after this building was built, uh, the zoning changed so that. Uh, retail has one set of parking standards and restaurants have another. The restaurants are based on seating, the retail is based on square footage. So there is a, a difference that's happened since this building was originally put up. A restaurant um, has a different parking standard than a retail business, unlike when it was originally built. And if you walk along market. <laughs> If you walk along Market Street, you will see that we have permitted uh, benches. People put benches in front of the various benches in front of Bread Alone, benches in front of Samuels, and that we permit um, because they'll take up as much space as tables and chairs. So, Can I have benches? That, uh, it depends on the width of the sidewalk as well. Yeah, that, that might be a narrower sidewalk than on Market yeah. Street. It, it, it's a narrow sidewalk down here. If there's enough room, people safely to get by with a baby carriage, walking the dog, whatever. It, there's a, there definitely is, just because I know that Krogh is next door and they have all those tables and stuff like that outside. And I, I know they people walk past to go there. And I know, I feel it like should be, it should be five feet of yeah. right. clearance beyond whatever table or, or seating um, so, so that people don't have to walk you know, single file to walk by your table or your bench. Okay. Isn't, isn't there an actual green area right there? Yes. In, there front, is. in front of that? There yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a grass area mm -hmm. right, right in front of that. So you could put the stuff out on the grass area and the, the sidewalk wouldn't even be compromised at all. That's that would be a better solution. Right. Yeah. yeah. Is, right. is the grass area owned by the Rhinebeck Bank or by Kurthoys? Uh, the bank and Kurthoys each own 20 feet from the building. It's a, it's a shared right away. So could I put a bench or table thing there? Well, this year you can do anything, but you have to get a permit for it. You have to draw up, you're gonna give something to the village clerk and the village board Make sure it's with a, a nice ruler and clear that the board will understand um, about where, a bigger plan than just a store that you would show where you're going to put stuff. Okay. So I have a small the bank has an easement over that area. Then, in the permanent way, you know, beyond this summer, we'll have to get an agreement from the bank to be able to put anything permanent out there. Okay. All right. Now, uh, even if a small space like that has a stand-up bar or a stool area to sit in. That's considered a restaurant? No, it's, it's considered a restaurant because it serves food or drinks. Oh my God, really? <coughs> wow. So the definition of a restaurant is a retail business where food and beverages are sold to customers for consumption at a table or a counter or on a patter or off the premises as carry out orders. Oh. So it sounds like a restaurant to me. Yeah. The only, the only issue is it is retail, 
doesn't sound like a restaurant to me because I was in a restaurant business for 25 years. And that definitely is not a place for a restaurant. That's a place for pick up stuff and go. Well, so, under our definition, it is a restaurant. You know? Right. I understand your definition, but I also understand I've been paying in lieu of fees since 1983 and there's no real reserves in there. So I'm not too sure what the in lieu of fee goes for. You know what I mean? I, I don't understand over all these years of all the in lieu of fees. The only thing that's been done with parking lots is put in new electric and new lighting and whatnot. And it really hasn't had anything to do with increasing the parking. It, it's, it's in the code. I know that, I don't know, this is, this, this is all the purview of the village board. I believe that a couple of years ago, they resurfaced and uh, 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 striped the village parking lot and they used some of the parking and lure fee money to do that. Right, right. But what I'm saying is this is, it. what I'm saying is this, this fee is in lieu of fee of parking, not in lieu of fee of fixing the parking lot, not in lieu of fee of putting new lighting in the parking lot, and not in lieu of fee of striping a parking lot. So, and, and, hold and on, actually, time out, time out. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt Mr. Kruger, but right now uh, yeah. there's more to this application. Uh, Megan okay. has a sign application. I think right. um, your concerns and your issues could be drafted in the letter or possibly uh, consulted with the mayor and the trustee boards. But I think at this time, we need to regroup and let Megan continue uh, with her application. If okay, her sign should be the exact same size of all the signs that are rubber stamped all the way down here. We're looking at our application right now. I'm, I'm probably you can't this. see it on your I, iPhone, Joe, but we're I, looking I, at I can two foot by two by foot two by foot so it's four square feet. feet. And yep. it's a square, it says Soul Assay Smoothie Bar. There you go. Yeah. That's just wood, it's carved. Yeah, it's, uh, and then it has like a weathered overlay over it. So it can't, um, can't get damaged. And, and what's the, there, that's the one I, I was yeah, gonna ask. The is. other version that has the uh, relief painted and the yeah, so that was it before it got the shellac and all that stuff on top of it. Now it's, that's the one that's all ready. Oh, is it, uh, is it light lit? No, 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 no. Nope. No, that's light. like a lighter color in the inside and then the black. Kind of like the sun. That's what soul stands for, is the sun. This will be outside the, the restaurant? Perpendicular. Where all the signs in that complex hang. Right. Yeah. Nice looking sign. Yeah. Very nice. First time I've seen it. A little different, but it looks nice. Yeah. All right. So you have to come back in two weeks. Yep. We need a motion chair to schedule the public hearing for May 18th. Okay. So I'm going to make a motion to schedule a public hearing for the smoothie bar on May 18th. So moved. I'll okay. uh, second that. Michael seconds. All those in favor? Hi. Hi. All right, we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks, guys. Um, with a good drawing, and then one that's even bigger than that, that would show possible chairs or tables or chairs in the grass area or a bench in the grass area, a bench okay. against the building. So you have a, you know, an outside concept as well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So um, the next item is uh, 46 Livingston Street. Alterations to the exterior of the building. All right, so we have, we have uh, Two drawings that was set. I think Orion could bring them up, um, showing what you want to do to the west porch and to the south porch. Yeah. Um, now this is a really, I'm sure you appreciate that, a really highly important, critically important building to the village. 
So um, we're concerned that this, that whatever alterations you do are done right. Um, so you can see Mulberry and then Livingston is below and it's the back behind the fence, the enclosed porch. And then on the side, which is more visible, it's almost on the front of the building, um, is that, that other deck. And you're, you're flopping a staircase to make more deck and put it up against the building. I think there's a lot of concern by the board about the, the details are quite uh, extensive on that side of the building. You can see um, you know, the second floor as well as the first floor. So um, the board was talking, we did, we wanted to look at what uh, Lydia is doing with the demolition permit, if you were watching before. Um, we did a field trip to walk around the building and take a look at things. So we get a good idea and make suggestions to see whether we like this. So um, I don't know how the rest of the board you know, would comment on this. I think Michael, that would be appropriate. Yes. I think we need to do a site visit. This is a very important building and the architectural fretwork is, is really good. And we have to make sure that, you know, it stays. Right. Yeah, because it looks like you would be keeping that or moving those railings around the side and keeping the look of that with the column and so the first and second floor still match. Um, but it would really, we owe it to the history of this building to take a, a walk around just to make it clear that we understand what you're doing so that we will know what we're approving. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Jeff, yep. John? I agree. Yes. All right, so what we like to do is schedule this. I don't know what, what, what time people have. What's, we, we've been doing these like Saturday at 10 o'clock. It seems to be good for most people. Um, so Mr. Chair, what I will do is I will um, send out an email tonight to the board as well okay. as to you, um, Shay and Mark um, with the tentative of this Saturday beginning at 10, at 10 a.m. If that works within your schedule and, and hopefully it works too with the board. Sounds good. Yep. Right, Thank so you. See if we can arrange this to take a walk and then you can come back on the 18th. So right. Mr. Chair, what we need is a uh, motion to yeah. uh, table this to the May 18th meeting. Mm -hmm. Table this application. I have a question first. Um, Go ahead. From the submitted materials, it appears that you're getting a, a approval from the State Historic Preservation Office as part of a funding mechanism. Is that true? So they've looked at these plans and approved them? Yes, they have. Yeah, I already, part of it is because the woodwork on all those railings is rotted out. Um, and so we already, we had already submitted an application to there's rotted woodwork all over the exterior of the house to replace that. And so part of this was an amendment to that original application in order to just expand the size of the back landing and mm -hmm. to expand the size, just to move the stairs over, which I know um, from one of the previous owners was a later addition to the building. It was done in the 1970s or something, was the extension of the West porch out from being flush with the house. So we would keep all of the fretwork that's there. And basically, if you look at it, you can see where we would just move it in order to move the stairs over and just use the kind of the decking to kind of cover up where the stairs are in that space. Um, but it would look almost identical and really is barely visible from the street. And the back is not visible at all. And that's definitely, there's no fretwork or detail or anything on the back deck. It's just a very small, rustic kind of landing. All right, I just wanted to ask that uh, question if the state has already approved this and you've shown them your plans. Yes, I did. All right. Um, I would well, like I'm to... okay with it. If, if yeah. the applicant's okay with it, I'm okay with a field visit, but um, 
you know, what they're doing looks sensible to me. I would like to ask for a little more scaled and dimensioned sketch. The, I did look at the sketches and I, until I saw these pictures, I really couldn't really understand what was happening with uh, both of the locations. It's a pretty, pretty primitive thing. You, you saw in the prior discussion we had about the uh, smoothie bar, that we need to get a little bit better than kind of a, you know, napkin type sketch. Well, that's why I think the walk around will benefit yeah. all of us, you know, be able to see like with the Lydia's house. Oh, absolutely. What they're absolutely. trying to do and understand I'm, that. I'm just suggesting for the record, for the because record. These, these, will, these will become part of the record so that people in the future will know um, what was actually, what was actually done. Did the state not require something um, drawn out and scaled? Um, they, they just required the photographs of what's there with the description of the changes that I proposed. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, I agree then, you know, if you can do something with a straight edge and, and to scale uh, and say, where the detailing is going to be replicated or moved if it's going to be moved if you say it's rotten it's probably going to be replicated rather than moved right right well the detail itself is is not rotten it's all the it's all the tops of all of the uh, banisters that are rotten and need to be replaced so yeah so if you can note on there you know this existing section of detailing is going to be moved to the front and from here to there you know so we can be confident that the detail is going to be preserved because that is quite extraordinary. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. And I think this will be very good. Lydia and the mayor and the village board are working on expanding. We've got approval to expand the historic district, and um, they're trying to explain to people the benefits of being in the historic district. And this is a prime example that you can get, you know. Uh, assistance from the state with renovations to a historic structure if you're in the historic district. And so that'll you know, help them and when they have their public hearings to uh, expand the historic district to sell people on the advantage of being in historic district. This is a prime example of it. So Ryan will send the notice out and hopefully, um, did, did we vote on the, uh, the motion to uh, hold the hey. We did not vote on the motion to table. Okay, can we, uh, all those in favor of tabling this till the 18th, say aye. 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 Good. All right, so if, Ryan, if this works out, we can do this Saturday. We'll hopefully uh, have good weather. And uh, Mr. Ryan, Chair, I think we need that. to redo that. I, I, I never, I don't have recorded who made the motion and who seconded. Um, I think we need to do that over. All right, who... I made the motion, I think. And I, I second it, I think. <laughs> and then you interrupted yourself. I, I said I, I think. <laughs> and asked the question. Right. We all said I. So it was John Clark made the motion. Michael Gee um, seconded it. Then John Clark interrupted his motion by asking another question. <laughs> we forgot where we were. But then we all voted to approve John's uh, motion. So I think we're OK. All right. Thank all right. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> See you soon. Um, all right. The next item okay. on the agenda is uh, 38 West Market Street. And we got a letter. Are they here? They are. Okay. Um, Is this, an, is this an official site plan approval or, or a discussion? What it's an official site plan application, Mr. Mr. Chair. All right, so it's siding and new windows. Um, do we have images of the windows and what? Yeah, They're Marvin, I think, weren't they? If I'm remembering. Uh, yes, this is John Arthur. Uh, good evening, folks. Uh, they, are, they are Marvin. Um, I can I can bring up details on my screen if that's helpful. Go ahead, John. You can share. Yes. 
Well, I'm going to I'm going to bring up. Uh... Okay, can can you see that detail now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I'll go to the window. So in in the front facade, uh, the upper two windows uh, by the upper porch were replaced, <laughs> and you see a detail of it um, from the porch view here. And by the way, those those existing windows. Uh, uh, I'm not seeing a detail in the window. Yeah, I've got a I'm scroll. still seeing the I'm still seeing the helicopter view. Oh, um, let's see. I'm gonna move to the next page. I'm on mine. I'm actually on the second page. It uh, is either lagging, John, or it is n it's not moving. Okay, so yeah, maybe maybe John, if you stop the share and just reopened it while you're on the second page. Yep, I will. Uh, I'll try that. Good. Okay, hopefully we won't have the problem when we go to the third page. Uh, so there's the front facade of, of the building. The upper two windows needs to be replaced. Uh, so our plan is to really replace them in kind. It will look exactly the same. It's a Marvin signature series. So it's a very high quality window. On the rear, let me know if this, um, did you get to that page three? No, we're still no. there. So I'm wondering if I'd be better off sharing my screen in that way. Maybe that might be the problem. Uh, let me try that. So I don't know if I have an option to actually do that. All right, I think I'll just I'll proceed the way we did it the last time. Yep. All right, so that's this is the the rear uh, of the building, which uh, faces uh, Mirabu. Uh, so the the two uh, windows, the arrows are being replaced. It's the same uh, Marvin uh, signature series. And actually, the third page, um, you have the packet. It would show you what that really is. Uh, let me see if I can do that again. So there is the, uh, there's the window. This is actually a picture from, uh, from Williams uh, and some details on, on the window itself. Uh, it does not have divided light. It will be replaced uh, in exactly the same format as, as the existing windows. Is it possible to do two over twos? Um, you mean like, like in, to the picture to the uh, left? Um, I would prefer not to. I mean, I really want to have as uh, a clear view uh, outside as possible. I'm not a big, big fan of divided light. Uh, and uh, you know, all the other windows in the building are not divided light. They're just uh, solid full pane. So we, we like the format that uh, that's there. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly not historic looking, though, and this is a historic building. Obviously, the windows have been replaced. And if you're going to replace them, why not replace them with something that would at least look slightly historic, more historic? Um, certainly, this building would have had, we're not asking for a six over six or something like that. Two over two still provides plenty of light and clarity 
but it gives the appearance of a historic window rather than something that obviously is a replacement of modern one. There, there's one other problem, um, which is that these windows have actually already been ordered. Um, when we originally had our contract lined up, they placed the order for the windows and actually the siding, and we wound up canceling the, the siding order when we found out we would have to go through this process. Unfortunately, they couldn't they couldn't change the windows. So I'm pretty pretty stuck with what 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 they're providing. Uh, and again, we're just replacing the windows in exactly the same format as we as that is in the current building. Well, I think the, well, yes, that's unfortunate. I think that the major problem we have is with the siding. What is the siding on the front of the building? Is that clapboards, wood? All right, so the, the, the siding on the front of the building, I'll bring up the, the picture again. Uh, it's wood. It's a Dutch lap style. Um, you know, I don't really have any detail on how long it's been that way or when it was, when it was installed. Um, let me bring up the picture going back. Um, but the siding on the on the other three sides is either a, a vinyl or asbestos siding, and, and it's going to come off. Yeah. So 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 here's a view of the front. Um, the vinyl on the siding and, and the sides, and um, what we're talking about is the there's a small alleyway between the Beekman Arms. Um, and, and my building uh, on the uh, the east side and on the west side there the uh, building at 40 west is pushed back a bit and there's some a lot of vegetation trees uh, plants uh, on that side and of course the back faces the uh, uh, the rear toward Mirbu. so that material is um, just really cheap vinyl siding uh, that was on there when we took over the building um, we originally thought it might be a good idea as part of the renovation to paint it to match the front because it does stand out when you when you look at the rear of the building or even when you walk down the street you see a piece of the building and it's yellow, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, but the closer we looked at it, um, we realized that the uh, it really had to be replaced. It was in such poor condition, and also it's, it's that cheap vinyl siding that you can push on and it it gives. So uh, that siding over over the years has 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 warped and um, become, become dirty. Well, the village code, the HDO code specifies cedar or hardy board. You sent out a flyer for something which looks like PVC plastic. Um, yes. I understand it's durable and sturdy, but it's plastic. Well, it, it is it is plastic. I, I know that the, the code also allows for a solid uh, PVC. Uh, this material they call it solid core PVC. I actually have a sample I could I could I could show you over the the camera. Um, but let me see if I can pull that up a little bit. I'm gonna stop the share and. I can also pull it up, John. Would you like me to do that? Well, let me show you this, the sample. So I, I do have a sample from the manufacturer and I you know it's difficult. This is not the exact profile, but what you can see is it has a, a, a wood grain appearance and it's, it doesn't push in. So it's not like the siding that's there or even the siding that's on the Beekman in the, in the rear annex. It, it, it's solid and the side view has, has a foam. So it's a foam with a PVC and then a, a, some sort of proprietary uh, coating uh, with the coloring. So that's what the material looks like. And again, what we're, what we're doing for the profile is we're using a Dutch lap um, profile to, to try and complement the front of the building. So it's got a similar look to it. Have you checked to see whether any original siding is underneath that vinyl? Um, I have not. Uh, the uh, one thing I also mentioned, the rear of the building um, is asbestos uh, tile, so uh, that's something that we're going to have to uh, to go over. Uh, so it's really a different rear than on the sides. Yeah, a lot of a lot of vinyl siding was put over the original wood, 
And when you take it off, it doesn't, uh, you know, you can restore the original wood a lot easier than you put a new coat over it. So I think you should at least try to see if there's original wood siding underneath that. I mean, could be restored. I, I, I could look. I mean, I can't imagine that if there's anything. In, I mean, they wouldn't have put, if it was something like that, that it could have been painted or restored, I would have imagined that the previous owners would have done so. Most everything in the building was in very poor condition when we took it over. So I, I when we started looking at, you know, looking at the bones of the building and what's, what we've been covered in doing our renovations, everything is, um, there's a lot of rot and a lot of materials that just, um, Terrible shape. Uh, really hard to houses or more than in the village that were vinyl sided that they took the vinyl siding off and and restored the wood. There's one right up on Livingston Street that's in the process of doing that now. So it is possible you should at least check it out to see if there's original wood siding under there that you could restore. I'm not saying it's likely or that it might be rotten, but sometimes you'd be surprised. Yeah, I mean, but you know, when, when we first looked at just the cost of painting, because the original concept was to just paint what, what was there, um, you know, we realized the cost of that was was ridiculously high. Um, and then if I go the extra mile and get uh, go with the pool siding, uh, I need a, a much more durable, uh, lasting finish. Uh, and you know, it's not going to have to be you know painted every so you know so many years. I mean, that's one of the problems with the wood. If, if you look at some of the buildings around uh, the village, the ones that are actually wood are, are, in, are in really bad shape. Um, under, you know, they're, they're crinkled or they're rotten underneath. And they've been painted over a hundred times. So we think this is a, a view that's going to you know, look good for many years to come. And, we, and let's keep in mind too, it's, it is the, the side of the building and, and the rear of the building. It's, it's set back quite a bit from uh, the Mirabu parking lot. And it, the front of the building is really what people see walking down the street. Um, well, just to be straightforward, vinyl and, um, and aluminum siding are prohibited under the code. Right, but PVC for some reason is not. Well, PVC, that was done for, um, for solid PVC that could be used as trim. <clears throat> Sometimes people want to, you know, use that on balustrades or whatever. And when it's painted, you can't tell the difference. Um, whereas this looks like vinyl siding. I know it has what you think is an attractive wood grain, but wood doesn't look like that. That looks like fake wood. <clears throat> and the code specifically says vinyl or aluminum siding is prohibited. Now, I don't see how we can approve vinyl siding. Now, you could do, if you don't like wood, if you don't like painting, you know, you can do fiber cement, which doesn't need to be painted near as often. Um, and is a reasonable material that's approved by the code. Um, but we can't, um, we can't go against what I think the code clearly says, which is vinyl siding is prohibited. And this yeah. is vinyl siding only match. The only difference is that it's got vinyl or some polystyrene material behind it, which is another form of plastic. I, again, the, the areas that, that are on the side of the building are not something that faces the public. I understand your point, uh, but you know, we're, we're talking about an alleyway that's between us and, and, and the Beekman Arms. And the Beekman Arms, um, the annex building, that has cheap vinyl siding on the back of that. So we're going to be a, you know, dramatically improved over the look of that building. Uh, the building um, to, the, to the west, um, that's not a publicly accessible area, and it's, it's heavily... Um, covered in landscaping, so you generally don't see the side of that building unless you're on that property. And then, it's, then you're in the Mirabu parking lot where the, the view is from a distance. So I think the view of the wood grain is not something that the public are, are going to be, you know, the casual observer is not going to really see that. Um, so you know, we're looking at, you know, what can we do to improve the building to, to improve the look in the village and improve it for our neighbors, like like Mirabu and, and, and their neighbors on, on both sides, um, and, and not be cost prohibitive where it's just not worth doing the project. So that's kind of where we're at. The, you know, this is almost a $30,000 improvement in terms of the, the windows and really mostly for the siding. And um, the materials for you know, hardy board or wood, uh, 
and that's 150 percent of the cost and that doesn't even include going in there and doing the painting and then taking into account, into account future maintenance so um you know that's just you know not a project that that financially you know it's not really in our budget we're hoping that this would be a good compromise it would include the aesthetics and you know, we're asking the the board for uh maybe a waiver on um what would normally be the materials that you would uh, request the uh, planning board this is just my opinion but i think it's based on the law is it's not allowed we, we have to apply the code um if you want to take this to the zoning board of appeals based on a hardship on economic grounds you have the right to do that but, but we can't approve something that's not allowed in the code and so you can make good cost arguments and whatever um we still can't approve vinyl siding as far as i'm concerned in the historic district and because it's not a historic material and so we would like the windows you can say are replacement in kind um but you're putting on a different material now uh for the siding or you're proposing to and as far as i'm concerned it's a prohibited material and that was written in the code and we can't waive it um well i, I mean I, the planning board does have discretion and this is you know from your own quote the, the, the planning board does have discretion to grant waivers uh, for siding. No, it doesn't where does it say in our code that we have this discretion to grant waivers for siding? It doesn't say that anywhere. Well, it says the planning board shall have the discretion upon the application to vary or waive the criteria standards set forth in subsection D um, based on the following criteria. And there's five points for the general design, character, and appropriateness of the property of the proposed alteration or new construction. And I'm not going to go through, through all the text, but. Um, you know, the texture, materials, and color in their relation to similar features uh, or other properties in the neighborhood. And in other, there's other reasons where the board, there's other um, options where the board can, can waive. If I could, um, Ryan, would you mind if I shared my screen? Go right ahead. Okay. Hold a sec here. Let me bring this up. Share, pick uh, basic, where's my, there we go. Can we see that? Yeah. Okay, so this is, a, I just took a walk today and this is a picture of the side of the building. So I would, um, I would not agree that the side and the back of the building are not visible to the public and that therefore it shouldn't matter much um, as the front of the building. Um, I think it's quite visible from the side. It is certainly visible from the back when you're in uh, Mirabeau. Um, and I agree with, with John Clark that uh, we, the, the designations that were made in the uh, historic district overlay code were made thoughtfully and for some reasons. I uh, appreciate that it may be a financial concern, but um, that's why uh, these, these codes were made to protect the uh, character of the historic district. You pointed out that there may be other buildings that have vinyl siding. That's true, uh, but they couldn't now. Um, and that's just, that's just the way that it is. So um, I'll stop my share now and say that I'm in agreement with uh, the points that John Clark has made. The Peekman Arms intersection is the oldest intersection in the village. It has some of the oldest houses there. And, you know, it, all that's allowed in the code, as John Clark stated, is hardy board or cedar. And um, we're, we're not, we had a letter from Justin, our, our current code enforcement officer, that said he's going to leave it up to the planning board. Um, but it's clear that we, we cannot do this. The only way this could be approved to put a, a plastic vinyl siding on a historic building is if the zoning, you could make the case for financial hardship, as John said, to the Zoning uh, Board of Appeals. We, we can't, unfortunately, we can't take any action on this. We have never approved, it, since this historic district overlay was created years ago, there has never been an approval of any siding other than cedar or hardy board. And uh, over the last 10 years, 
there have been several dozen houses that have been restored and the vinyl has been removed and it's been replaced with the cedar or, or uh, hardy board. Uh, this has never been done since the HDL was created. So this and th that there have been cases, um, there's a house right up the road on Covington Street in which they took off the vinyl siding and they found that the clabbered was restorable, which would be a cost effective way of doing it because you wouldn't have to recite it at all. You just have to repair and paint. Well, I can't take you off the, the rear of the building because that would require an, an abatement and then that, that's a whole nother cost item. So the, and all the contractors I've spoken with won't even touch the back. You know, the only option that I've been given is to, uh, to put something over, uh, basically encapsulate what, what's there. So even if we found something on the sides that was that was usable, restorable, which I think is very doubtful. I mean, I think the probability is, is you know, in the single digit percentile. Uh, the rear of the building is not an option for that. And the rear of the building is probably the most important view because that, that that's the view that you're know, looking at the front face of the mirror room. Well, I guess you have to think about this and decide if you want to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals to request a, uh, a variance from the historic district overlay. Because we cannot approve anything that is illegal and that's not in the code, this final PVC siding, unfortunately. And we never approved such thing. Okay, well, um, I appreciate your time, folks. Um, uh, I'm disappointed because, again, my goal was to, to make the property look better um, than, uh, than it is now. Um, but it, it's, it's, you know, what we're talking about is, is, is cost prohibitive at this, at this time, really. So just to jump in here, um, that's the siding issue. I believe the window issue has not been, um, it's been an addressed, but there's been no uh, res 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 uh, resolution to it. Right, so, so I guess I would ask for, for uh, at least an approval on, on the windows because I, you know, it would be nice to have operable windows in the building. It would be nice if, as John said, they were two over two, but you've already ordered them. How does the rest of the board feel about, about replacement in kind? So I think we we have less leverage yes. in terms of the code if he wants to replace the existing windows with existing, um, windows. existing format. It's just a better quality. I think um, we can't require somebody to, to do something new. Uh, if they just choose to do something new, we can require that it's made out of historic materials and is consistent with the code. But um, I would be willing to uh, go forward with the windows, even though I would much prefer if they had put, chosen a, um, a historic upgrade rather than replacement in kind. So would we like to approve a modification to the site plan for approval of the four new Marvin windows? Right, I'll make that motion to approve a partial approval of the site plan to approve the four Marvin replacement windows. I'll sorry. second that. I'm sorry, where, where, where are the four windows? There were two on the- Two in the front and two in the back. In the rear, okay. Please go ahead, Michael Gee. <laughs> I, I, I seconded David's motion. A roll call vote, Jeff Christensen. Aye. Michael Gee. Aye. James Davidson. Aye. John Clark. Aye. David Miller, aye. All right, we got a, a partial approval. I, I don't know what to do about it. You have to think about, and as John said, lift up some of the uh, vinyl siding. You might be surprised. Well, I'll certainly try to do that um, and see, um, see, see what's there. And I guess I'll have to consider if, there, if that's not usable, um, taking another step toward the, uh, the, the zoning board. Okay. Right, thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, have a good night. Good night. <clears throat>
We have a discussion now. If, if uh, Marla and Brian Walker are here, there they are. Hi. Hi. 57 Chestnut Seat, Exterior Alterations and Repairs. So uh, what happened here? This, this was a renovation that was not a file for a building permit? No. No. No? Uh -huh. um, our house, much like the last, uh, um, well, okay. What, what we moved to the village about four years ago when we bought our house. And um, even when we bought it, we knew that the siding on the house was not original. And there was an area in the back that where it was removed and we could see the original siding underneath. Um, so, uh, you know, the goal was just to remove the, the, the non-traditional, non-historic siding and just, uh, you know, for the purpose of painting and cleaning up the house, um, just expose the, the original siding. Um, in the process, we discovered areas that didn't have any siding, uh, where there was an addition added at the back of the house. Probably from like the 70s or so. We, we had a feeling that that might not have the original siding because it looked, it's newer. Um, but everything else is, is the original siding from, uh, you know, when the house was built. So all we wanted to do, all we want to do is just repair those areas and paint where the siding exists, the original siding exists, which is almost the entire house. And then in the very small back little addition, it's almost like a, a mud room that someone built in the 70s, I think. We were just going to continue the original siding there as well. So that the whole house would have the same siding. So the reason the walkers are here tonight is to figure out if they need site plan approval because it's an historic home, it's in the historic overlay district, if they need a approval for this action. And if they need to formally submit a site plan application for the next meeting. I think that would be good. So we could just see exactly what you're doing. So you, you pulled off the, the new siding and you discovered the old clappers underneath. Yeah, like I said, there was a, and this was a, like a synthetic vinyl siding. And, um, and we, the, we had an area exposed where we could see the original wood siding and um, it was in good condition. And then we exposed a little more. It looks, you know, paintable for the most part. It looks great. I mean, it, the whole, pretty much the whole original house existed side, existing siding is actually in excellent condition. It just needs to be, you know, repaired here and there around windows and such and then paint it. It's, it's really, the only thing that we're adding is in this little very small area of the back where there's no siding um, is, is just to match that and then paint it. As, as John Clark had said, that exists you know, in many houses in the village. My house is covered with cedar shakes. And when we had to change a couple of windows in the back a few years ago, uh, it was rotted all around the bottom. So we pulled off some of the shakes to put a window in from the outside. And we discovered there are the clabbers and nail the shakes right through the clabbers. Hmm. And uh, I don't know why they did that, but uh, you know, I was just gonna have the house painted. It wasn't, you know, it was a lot of money to take all of the shakes off the entire building, fill in the 8 million nail holes of the shakes standing right. down and trying to just leave it alone. It's the way it's <laughs> in the 50s. We do have 8 cool. million nail holes to deal with. That's true. Yes. But other than that, the siding is in really pretty amazing condition, I would say. And um, Mr. Mr. Arthur was here to hear this. I know. We had an inkling because, <laughs> you know, we had seen that exposed section when we first purchased the house. So we were excited to eventually be able to do this. Um, and to be honest, we didn't even know that this was something that we needed to go before um, the board about because we just thought, well, we're just fixing what's already here. This other section was never historic. It's in the back. I mean, if we had our way, we'd probably chop it off. But, you know, it's here already and we use it because <laughs> it isn't, doesn't fit with, you know, the, the original house. Um, but 
anyhow, we just want to, you know, continue the same siding there. It's a very small section. I'm wondering whether this needs site plan approval. Um, because That's why we're here. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm trying to find the ammunition in the code because they're doing the right thing by the historic district. Right. And it seems to me um, there should be some wording in here that allows them to do the right thing without having to get approval for it. Um, it does say that, you know, all new construction and major exterior modifications shall require site plan approval. But then it says in two sentences down, major exterior additions or modifications shall include new replacement siding materials. Right. Uh, this isn't new materials. This is the old one that's underneath. So I'm wondering whether we really need to have site plan approval. But there are a few spaces because I've walked by it and there are at least two or three windows that you can see from the street that are just plywood <clears throat> that were modified at some point and then the the newer siding was put over you couldn't see it until that was taken off and you're going to yes. have to put new matching something. that's what i'm talking that's what i was referring to yeah. that that's that new section so that that never had the clabbered wood so we we're just going to put clabbered wood there that matches the existing original um part of the house I mean, right now, I mean, the sooner we can do it, honestly, the better, because it is exposed plywood. Well, I, I, I kind of agree with John. We had a reevaluation of the historic district in 2012, and uh, the group that did it, you know, had a little slideshow at a Village Hall showing 40 houses that over the last several decades had taken the bad stuff off, exposed the good wood and restored it or ripped off the bad stuff and nailed up new cedar clappers. And people are doing it. A lot of people discovered good stuff under the new stuff. And, you know, you're lucky that you did. I don't remember, for instance, reviewing all those houses that took off the vinyl and restored the wood. Um, so I, I'm thinking that at least in past precedent, precedent we to remove non-historic material and restore the historic material shouldn't require a site plan unless there's some other modification required. Right. All right. So I guess we, this is not a site plan, so we don't need an official vote. Do we have a consensus that this is the way everybody else feels? Jeff? Yes. Um, my understanding is that they took off what would be a non-compliant siding and are restoring what was compliant siding and are just um, completing uh, spaces that need to be restored with the same compliant historic siding. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. And I, I agree. This, uh, this should not require a site plan or a review. And we can, we can uh, refer to the clause John Clark mentioned about uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the code to support this. Are you adding any other details or are you just patching the holes? Um, for now, I mean, we were considering, you, we could see where we've removed the siding, the actual like pattern in the dirt underneath <laughs> that indicates there were shutters. shutters yeah. And so, those are long gone. I don't know where those, are, but in the future, we would like to, we'd like to put the shutters back on the yeah. front of the house. All right. Well, when, you, when you put new shutters on, you'll have to come back to us. Okay. Because <laughs> we don't want PVC shutters or no. <laughs> you know that PVC shutters are easy to maintain. I don't want PVC shutters. Pain, but... I'm a decor. I'm a designer. My husband's an architect. So, so you know, we all we want to do is make the the house look like, as it was supposed to look. And actually, when we saw the outlines of the shutters, we were like, oh wow, that's going to look so good eventually because that's how it was supposed to be. So, Michael? I, I'm fine with it. Me too. James is cool too. All right, so we're going to let this go, and we're very happy that you're restoring a historic building to its original look. This is great work you're doing. Thank you. Uh, I mean, that, this is one of the main reasons we bought the house. You know, that's what draw, draw, drew us here. So, Marla and Brian, before you start anything else, you need to submit a building permit. Okay. Okay, so contact Ryan, get the permit from him. 
Okay. Thank I, you, I can more than happily send you a blank copy. Okay. Great. Thank you. Good. Thank good you. Luck Have a good evening. For, thanks for the good work. Thank okay. you. <laughs> thanks a Thank lot. You. Bye. So um, there's one, well, there's two more things. One, um, the minutes, are we, are we finally happy with the minutes of the 16th? I'm happy with the last now? version I saw. Huh? I'm happy with the last version I saw. Yeah. I'm good. All right. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, March 16th, 2021. Do we have a second? Second. Je Jeff seconds? Yes. All those in yes. favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'm an abstention. I wasn't there that night. Okay. That's correct. Thank you, John. So we, one last thing, we got a letter from uh, the guys in the tax shop, a, a lawyer for the guys in the tax shop. I didn't quite understand the kind of the point he was trying to make. Um, did you see the letter that Ryan sent out? No, it only went to you, Dave, oh, it as the chair. Um, Why don't you share it with the rest of the board and we can talk about it next time? Sure, I okay. can do that. I mean, they're hopeful to come back based on the discussion they had with the board. They are hopeful to come back with site plan details and just overall to make things uh, official being that, you know, the previous use was retail and now it is a professional office. So they just want to um, make things more of an official record. Because Jonathan Cohen had said a year or two ago that they were just working conceptually in there, working things out. When they actually got into manufacturing, they would come back for a site plan and they never did. <laughs> and um, I think we came to a general agreement that it's not like a complete manufacturing place we could consider it a special office, but we should do it formally and they should come back. The last two times I've gone by there, there's been at least 20, 25 cars in the parking lot. There are. Yes. Yes. So it's not like he represented, which was just a few employees, you know, and no, no customers. He that said is, 15. Yes. So that is an item that definitely the board is going to have to address with uh, Mr. Mansfield and uh, the owners, and probably it's going to have to be uh, distinguished, you know, what parking is going where. Are there cars that are going to co? Are there cars that belong to um, this unlimited tomorrow? So um, obviously parking. that's going to have to be delineated in the parking lot as well as the site plan that they provide. Right, because it's a huge parking lot, um, but we just really should clarify why there are so many cars in there. Are they employees or are they customers? Yeah, he said there were yeah. no customers. You know, I, I felt comfortable when he left saying prof professional office was okay as a use, the type of use there that seemed more professional office than manufacturing. But um, now I don't know what to think because it seems like he misrepresented how many people work there? Or if they're visitors. Yeah. Customers. Well, he said they very rarely get customers. You know, they do most everything online. So these are concerns that need to be raised when they formally um, get here. Because we had talked about what Jonathan Cohen suggested that we would go with the, to the village board and make up an amendment to the code for light manufacturing. And then Mr. Fenton worked up a suggestion of what light manufacturing would look like as a change to the COVID. We never got around to it because they never came back. It was also believed that it didn't fit their timetable, that um, obviously they would have to go before the uh, mayor and the trustee board because there's obviously a process to adding to the zoning table, to the allow to the allowable use group, there is a process that would, you know, have to be un undertaken just just for it to become legal. 
um, and they felt that wasn't in their timetable. I think light manufacturer was concerned with things like noise, pollution, you know, making something. Uh, but this 3D printers are very high tech and that's not an issue, but we, we, I guess we never got around to it. We don't have to get around to it if we're comfortable that it's a professional office. We just should have them come in for site plan and ask all of our questions and make sure we're clarified. And because uh, there are a lot of cars there. Yeah. Anybody have else, any, any other issues? All right. Um, Somebody's phone's ringing. That's mine, but I don't have to get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, I guess we'll see everybody in two weeks. Yes. Saturday. Saturday. Saturday, yes. Ten, ten, ten. Well, I'm going to send something out and we, can, we can't we can talk on Saturday. We only ask questions of the owner. I am so ready to get to my key keyboard right now. Oh, good. So. I'm happy. <laughs> So all I need is a, a motion, motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. See you Saturday. I'll check the weather forecast. <laughs>